Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet Designs. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on the gorgeous seed stitch that you see right here. Now yours will look a lot tighter and you won't see as many of these gaps. Uh, the only reason you see gaps on mine, I use the larger hook so that you can actually see the stitches a lot clearer. Um, online yeah uh, in the meantime let's talk about what we're using today you will need a uh, cotton now I'm using an eight ply cotton from Bendigo Woolen Mills gorgeously soft it calls for a four millimeter hook normally I would use a 3.5 for this cotton by the way um, because my stitching is well it's usually tight but when I use this cotton it for some reason becomes a little loose anyway for today we are going to use a 4.5 just so that you can see the stitches my suggestion would be to use your four this is a DK weight or a number three weight overseas now if you made this in an Aran weight your your square will just be a lot bigger which is still good because you can use it for washcloth face cloth dishcloth whatever you want it for is entirely up to you all right now what i did was i uh, used one hook a pair of scissors a sewing needle two stitch markers and i would say you would probably need around I don't know 20 to 30 grams worth of yarn I mean really you won't need much mine again is a lot shorter yours will come up about that long by the end of this tutorial now this is a beginner tutorial so I do go a lot slower than normal so beginners get excited you guys can create this gorgeous washcloth and you can use it dishcloth or whatever it is you want to use it for um, I've actually given them away as gifts with a bar of soap in there folded them up tie them up with a nice uh, chain stitch strap and given them away as gifts so you can use it for whatever it is you want in the meantime I just want to show you this washcloth right here which actually is not a washcloth it is a swatch now we made this swatch exactly the same stitch that we're working on today we made this swatch in 2021 for our swatch blanket of 2021 and there's the blanket how gorgeous is that blanket I love 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 it was our blanket of the year that year we did a couple of swatches um, every month and by the end of the year I think we had about 25 swatches or something like that now that blanket is complete if you wanted to make that blanket I will leave a link to the blanket in the description box down below and you can create the blanket when you get an opportunity but in the meantime that swatch right there is the swatch that we are making today or is the dishcloth or washcloth that we're making today using that pattern how gorgeous is that all right my suggestion now would to be head off and find yourself some beautiful cotton make sure it's cotton if you're going to use it as a washcloth it's the best for washcloths use the right size hook for your cotton I'm using a larger size just so that you guys can actually see the stitches all right thank you very much for joining us I'm not going to hold you up anymore grab yourself a hook and your yarn and let's get making our gorgeous seed stitch washcloth or dishcloth Good luck all. Alrighty guys, we're going to start off by making a slip knot. Grab the tail end of your yarn, nice long tail about that much. Wrap it around your finger once and twice, holding it there and holding it down there. Just grab that back loop, passing it halfway over your finger, hold it there. Grab the other loop, passing it all the way over your finger, pop your hook in, give everything a tug and what you have is that. So you're now ready to start. All right. We're going to chain 32, okay? And a chain is yarn over your hook, pull a loop. Well, let's try that a nice close up. So it's yarn over your hook, pull a loop through to the loop on your hook. One, two, three. Don't make these too tight, yeah? So it's three, four, yarn over, five, yarn over, six, Yarn over, seven, eight, nine, ten, and off you go doing your 32 chains. You've done 10 already, you need another 22, and off we go. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 
31, 32. Now you could chain on extra or you could do less. Just make sure your, you know, your piece is big enough for you to use as a hand, like a washcloth here or a face cloth or whatever you want to use it for, or, you know, whatever you like, dishcloth, whatever. Okay. All right. So <laughs> we are going to start off by skipping four chains. So you go one, two, three, I'm sorry, skipping three chains. And in your fourth chain, you're doing a single crochet. One, two, three. And in your fourth chain, you're doing a single crochet. And a single crochet is just popping your hook in the top loop of that stitch, pull a loop through like so. You've got two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through both those loops. I'm just gonna pull a loop up so that we can actually add a stitch marker here. That single crochet is classified as a second single crochet in this row, just in the first row. Um, and the chain three will act as a double crochet in this first row. So you wanna pop your stitch marker in, but not in that single crochet stitch where you see the letter V. Go to the letter V right next to the stitch, which is the top, the very third chain that you did. You didn't do it, but it was part of the stitch. So you've got your one, two, three, and then you've got your stitch in the fourth. So pop your stitch marker there, like so. And now you are ready to continue your pattern. I'm gonna bring that out a little bit so you can see better. No, oh, that's too much. Hello. All right, we're going to make a double crochet now. And this is uh, the pattern, very simple pattern. Yarn over your hook into that very next little letter V that you see there, pop your hook in, pull a loop through. You should have one, two, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two of those loops, yeah? Yarn over, pull through the next two, and that's a double crochet. Also known as a treble for UK terminology, yeah? In the next stitch, you are doing a single crochet. So it's exactly what you've done here, you're going to do there. Pop your hook in that V, pull a loop through, like so. Two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, and that's your single crochet, but it's also known as a double crochet in UK terminology. Now, I'm just going to use US terminology for the rest of the row. Yarn over your hook in that stitch there, you're going to pop your double crochet, like so. You know what, let's get a close up, I think. A little, little bit more of a close up for a few stitches so you can see. In the very next stitch, you're doing a single crochet <laughs> if I can see it hello here it is excuse me um single crochet <laughs> yarn over your hook you're doing a double crochet pull a loop through three loops yarn over two two loops yarn over two single in your next all right super duper easy because guess what guys that's it for the row. Did I yell in the camera? I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I get excited. When I get excited, I start yelling. All right, so single double, single double, single double, all the way into each stitch across your row. All right, so off you go. I'm going to pop this little part on fast for you, and we will all meet when we get to our very um, last two stitches, I think. All right, so off we go, and I'll meet you there in a moment. Alrighty, how did you go guys? I'm on my, I think I'm on my second last stitch. Yes, there's the very last stitch right there. You should have landed on a single crochet now. Your very last stitch should be a double crochet. Now if you've done it wrong or you've missed a stitch, you might want to check it out and make sure you've landed on a double crochet. So make sure you are at the right amount of stitches at the end and you are doing a double crochet. If you ended up with a single, you've added more stitches and you've ended up with a single there, 
that is okay. Just remember that that will change your pattern a little bit, yeah? It's better to start with both sides exactly the same, your double and your double kind of thing, all right? So yarn over your hook, pop your hook in that last stitch and you'll have the knot hanging down the bottom there. Pull a loop through, one, two, three. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through the last two. All right, so what you now have is a completed row, row one done. Now what you want to do, not necessary again, but if you wanted to count your stitches, well it kind of is necessary to keep your work straight, you need to count these little letter V's, yeah? So you've got one there, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, twenty-nine. All right, so that's your count. Make sure you have the same amount of stitches across uh, in every row now. Yep, otherwise your piece will be crooked. Mm -hmm. All right, now this is a two row repeat pattern and this is your first row repeat right now. Your last stitch you did here was a double crochet. So you want to make in your next row, you want to make a single crochet in that stitch. At first you want to just chain one and flip your work. So we're going to work along these stitches here. When I say flip your work, it's either you turn your work this way or you turn your work that way. Whichever. I do it like I'm turning the page in a book just to remind me of which way I turned. It doesn't matter in this pattern, uh, but in some patterns you need to turn it the same way all the time. Yeah. All right. The very first stitch that you are actually in is here. You're going to put a single crochet. You're still sitting in there right there. You're going to put a single crochet in that stitch, your two loops. Yeah. Pop your hook in, pull a loop through two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through both loops, grab your stitch marker and you're going to put it in the very first stitch you made here. So from here you need to put your double, single, double, single all the way across. You are putting a double in every single stitch from your previous row and a single in every double, all right? We've started with a single, so our very next stitch should be a double. It'll go in that shorter stitch. So yarn over your hook into the tiny little stitch. The first row is a bit tricky, but after that it gets easier. Pop your hook in, pull a loop through, and I'll tell you where you're popping your hook in. You've got that little stitch there, and you're putting it through there, and you've got your two loops on top, and your tiny little stitch on the bottom. Pull a loop through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, two loops, yarn over, pull through the last two and then you've got the taller looking stitch here which is a double from the previous row. You're going to pop a single crochet in the top of that double. A double in the top of the single. Easy. A single in the top of your double. It's a lot taller, it needs the single. The next stitch is a lot shorter, it needs the double. And so on. All right, for every double, you're putting a single in it. For every single, you're putting your double in it. So it's super duper easy, yeah? And it makes the most gorgeous stitch. I cannot wait for this to be finished. Okay, and then you have yourself a washcloth as well. I just went quiet there for you, didn't I? I'm sorry. <laughs> Keep doing your singles and doubles all the way across. I'm going to pop this part on fast for you until we get to the end, and we're almost there. But just keep doing your doubles and singles, and I'll meet you at the end of the row. Alrighty guys, you should be, and I'll get you a nice close-up right now. 
this should be at the end of this section here where we're going to put right here you see the little stitch with your stitch marker in that will be a single crochet because these chain threes are acting as a double so the next stitch will be a double which will be in your last stitch and you can see the v right there and in the v that you're in so the next v is your double in your second last stitch and in your last stitch which is your chain stitch right there which to me is not only tight but it's also split so i'm going to take that out hopefully yours isn't split keep yours in if it's not split and then all you need to do is pop a single crochet in that very tight chain <laughs> and that very tight chain oh look i've even split that as well i'm doing well i'm doing so not well and there we go single crochet right there we're happy now all right so that's your very next row i mean already it's starting to look gorgeous it does get better and as you uh, go further on into the pattern this will actually close up a little bit more It'll tighten a little bit yeah so if you don't like the size of this now and you want it bigger you need to take all this undone and do a few extra stitches but it's actually a good size for a washcloth yeah so let's keep going this is your second repeat row. You are chaining one, two, and three, your final repeat row, not just your second. Now this is a lot looser, so it'll be easier to get in at the end of the row, we hope. Um, turn your work. So in this stitch that you are in, you have popped your chain three. And that will classify that stitch there. Your very next stitch is right here. So don't go into this stitch for your double rows when you start with your double yeah you go right into the very very tall stitch here right there with a single crochet so pop your hook in that stitch pull a loop through yarn over pull through two and once again it's double in your single and single in your double and a double in your single and a single in your double and absolutely fantastic double in your single i'm not going to let you sit here and watch me do this one what i will get you to do though is do exactly that single double single double single double get to this very second last stitch right here oh, the second last stitch right there and you can face it too and you can see the v's get to your very second last v and i'll meet you there and we'll talk about what we're going to do next all right so continue along the way get to that very second last stitch and i'll meet you there once you're done all right guys we are here at the end of this row as well and you would have your last two stitches left like i said to do and the last, second last stitch is a double, so you need to put a single crochet in there, like so. And your last stitch is a single crochet, so you need to put a double crochet in that last stitch, right in the stitch with your stitch marker. You can take it out if it's uncomfortable to work into, yeah. Or you can wait to do the stitch and then take it out and just finish off your double. And that's it. That is the two repeat rows that you need for the rest of your pattern. It's way too simple. It's the easiest pattern with the most cutest look. Now, yours won't be as loose as this. Yours will be much tighter because you're probably using the right size hook for your yarn. I just used a larger size hook so you can see the stitches that I'm doing. Yeah. All right. So guess what? Your job now is to actually do a certain amount of rows to the amount of the size that you want for your dishcloth, all right, or your washcloth. Me, I'm probably going to do 32 rows just for the sake of keeping it the same number. There's no real right or wrong way of doing this, but you go ahead and do your 32 rows. Meet me back here and I will leave the information there, right up there, right now. That time right there, if you go back to that time, that is your repeat rows. You are going to repeat those two rows over and over again until you get your 32 rows. Now you've already done, uh, what have you done here? You've done one, two, three rows. So really 32 take away three, 29. So head off on your own, do the amount of rows to make your 32 rows all together and I will meet you back here once you're done. All 
Alrighty guys, check it out. Is it not the most gorgeous thing you've ever seen? I love, love, love. Now yours truly only did 10 rows, but you should have had your 29 or 30 or whatever. And it doesn't matter what row you end on. Not in the slightest. What does matter is that you just cast off and you weave in your end, which will be very, very simple, yeah? There's your last stitch, whether it be the double or the single, again, doesn't matter. Pull a loop through like that, like as if you're doing a chain. Give yourself a long enough tail to weave in. Cut your work, pull your little tail and kind of give it a real tug tight. You know, tug there. <laughs> tug tight tug. And just thread a sewing needle or a darning needle, weaving needle, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, thread them. Work out which side you want to be your right side. Normally, the right side would be that very first row we did. So the right side, sorry about the orange lighting there, sorry when I go <laughs> close, is actually where your tail is on your left hand side. That is the right side of your work, but it doesn't really matter because this is work backward and forward, so you can make any side your right side, but I'm gonna make this side the wrong side. Turn it over and make it the wrong side. Again, not necessary, whichever you like, yeah? So where are we going with this thread? Where should we go? Entirely up to you. You can go back again and pull it over. I'm going to go down at the sides there or around the back and then under some stitching and, and tug it right into different areas. And then you can decide uh, how far down you want to go or whatever. But in the meantime, I'm just going to find a little... Mm, let's get a closer. Bring that out the way. All right. I'm going to find a little stitch to go into. Any stitch you like. I'm just going to go like that into any loop I see and pull it through and I didn't leave my tail short enough. Excuse me, Mary, come on. <laughs> and then go straight into another couple of stitches down there. Again, no right or wrong way. I guess it's best not to be able to see your thread from the back, I'm sorry, from the front, but it doesn't really matter in this case. I keep forgetting to make this shorter. Let's make that a little shorter. There we go. Um, it doesn't matter in this case because it's all one colour, but it's better to be able to hide your yarn, your needle, through some stitches. And what I've done is I've just split a few of the yarns in there. Before you do this, check your work because mm, this is not going to come undone. <laughs> the splitting of yarn does not come undone. You have to cut into your work to get it out. And you don't want to do that, yeah? All right, so what I've done is I've gone down this way a little bit, but I'm going to drop the row and go a little bit down there or come back in another section. Let's go back in another section. First, we'll start it in the right section, but not in the same stitch that you came out of. Split that stitch a tiny little bit. There, split. And go back just in a few stitches like that. And then, I don't know about you, but I might come down a bit just for fun. Something I don't usually do. I'm going to try it today and go down in a couple of stitches here like that. Check the front. Always check the front. Yep. Yep. And then go across into this section of stitches. Now, none of this is necessary. If you put it through two or three times in different areas, that's enough. All right, I'm done. I'm going back in another direction. I'm done. I am not going to go through any more. That is plenty. We're going to get our pair of scissors, cut it close to your work. Not too close because you don't want to cut your work. And then just give it a tug and it hides into your stitching. And the thing is, because you have gone through different angles, different areas, that will just, that will never come undone. All right. Oh, you can take your stitch marker out on the end of this one. You won't need that there anymore because, oh, I've pulled my thread. Can you believe it? You don't need that anymore because that's done. Now, if you wanted to, you could wash and block your piece. And that is, um, oh, I've pulled a lot of stuff here. Um, and that is washing and then pinning it down in every section if you like. Not necessary because you're going to use this as a washcloth or a face cloth anyways. All right. So thank you very much for joining us today for this gorgeous seed stitch. This is a stitch I love so much. Now mine's a little bit spacey because I used a larger hook. Yours won't have as many spaces. You'll see them, but they'll be tighter. Everything will be a lot closer and tighter, which is good. Yeah. 
but thank you very much for watching today guys um this is a beginner tutorial for beginners i try to make it as simple as possible but these are the sort of things yours will be this big yeah mine isn't that big but yours will be nice and big these are the sort of things that you need to work on to practice your stitches Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And don't forget to join us on our lives at 4pm Wednesday afternoons, 10am Saturday mornings, Melbourne, Australia time for your opportunity to choose a colour combination for our very next tutorial. Thank you for watching and ciao for now.